today is officially a day without any major saint on it. Uh, the calendar we have is, is pretty elaborate for what saint goes on what day, but there's some days where there is no major saint. And in the church, those days are called ferias. And on a feria, you're allowed to look at what else is going on that week and fill in one of the other things if you want to. So those who have good liturgical knowledge will know today is not the feast of the presentation of our Lord in the temple. It's Friday, but we won't be together on Friday. And so since there was nothing else planned for today, we will observe today. There's this feast that has many names. Some people call it the feast of the presentation of our Lord in the temple. Some call it the feast of the purification of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Some people call it candle mass, depending upon where you come from, what language you speak, and what traditions you had in your church. Normally on this day, I emphasize the candles part because we bless candles and distribute them normally on the Sunday closest. So since we're not doing that today, it actually is a good occasion to think about the other meanings of the day, particularly the presentation of our Lord in the temple, and to stop and wonder what Mary and Joseph must have made of this experience that they had that day. It, it, it's a little bit dangerous to compare this to the baptism of a child because they, the two ceremonies had different meanings, but it's worth imagining and remembering kind of what goes on at, at baptism and the way perhaps that some of those events shape who you turn into in your later life. I mean, I know for myself, I was baptized in the chapel at Fort Lewis, Washington, when I was a couple days old. And my mother's very Presbyterian parents came out for that occasion. My grandmother had fallen and broken her wrist. She had wrist in a, her wrist in a cast, but she was determined to hold her first grandchild, and so she did. They were also a little surprised when they got to coffee hour after church and discovered that there was being sherry consumed at the coffee hour. Now, according to family tradition, they were not so shocked that they did not also partake. <laughs> These are things that we remember. These are stories that I was told as I was growing up, what it was like at my baptism, that, that people came from a long distance, and it was a, a major occasion because my father was about to go to Vietnam for the first time. And so uh, there are all these things that were significant about it that, that shaped our family and shaped my life and the way that I think about my faith. Maybe the way I think about there being sherry at coffee hour, I don't know. But I wonder what Mary and Joseph took away from this occasion where these complete strangers came up to them and said these remarkable things about this child that they had just had. Now plainly, if we read the whole story, we have some idea that they may have had some sense this is not just a normal birth. Something is going on here that God has a hand in. But I wonder if perhaps these events, the, these encounters they had with Simeon and with Anna were things that they remembered, were these stories that they told Jesus as he was growing up. On this day, these things happened. And I wonder what effect that would have had on him. Most of us don't remember much about our own baptisms. Some of us are lucky enough to have those stories that are told to us. But there are plenty of other occasions when these things happen. There are plenty of times when at some turning point of our lives, whether we realize it's a turning point or not, whether it's a low point or a high point, it may not make any difference. But somewhere in those times, things happen that we need to hold on to, to remember what the presence of God felt like in that moment, and to carry that on into what happens next. Sometimes we need those memories of the presence of God to get us through the hard times. We need those memories of the presence of God to help us figure out what to do. One way or another, those beginnings matter. Today we have a story of the beginning of the life of Jesus. I hope we all have those memories as well, and that they sustain us in our life of faith, just as they did, we hope, him. Amen.